us on the SCG Tour January 2nd through the 3rd for the Cincinnati Open Weekend. On Saturday, play in the Modern Open Main Event. Every competitor gets a playmat featuring kitchen links, plus our latest Invitational Winners token, just for playing. The top eight finishers earn a spot in an upcoming Invitational and get one step closer to the Players' Championship. On Sunday, it's your format, your tournament, as you choose between Standard and Legacy Classics. All participants get an Invitational Winners token, and the top four competitors in each Classic qualify for an Invitational. There's plenty more to do in Cincinnati. All weekend, play in side events and earn tickets to spend at the SCG Prize Wall. Between rounds, meet the weekend's special guests, artist RK Post and Aaron Miller. And don't forget to tune into SCG Live as Cedric Phillips, Craig Kremples, and Nick Miller bring you coverage all weekend long. The Cincinnati Open Weekend is January 2nd through the 3rd. Step into the spotlight. We are here. Cedric Phillips, Matthias Hunt, and it is time to draw for our legacy group play. Matthias, how are you this morning? We're doing pretty well here. You excited? Absolutely. This is our most fun tournament of the year. It feels like we were just here a year ago in the Star City Game Center in Roanoke, Virginia, where we have some repeat customers, I would say. Yeah, Brad about, Nelson half, among them. about half the field made it back this year, but they're joined by a new cast of people, so we'll, we'll get a chance to meet them here as we draw them into their groups. I think one of the most imposing figures of the new cast is our Season 1 Invitational Champion. That's, of course, Jacob Wilson. As we, of course, draw group play, four players are already going to be locked into groups A, B, C, and D. Jacob Wilson locked into group A. I don't want to say an unknown because his resume kind of speaks for himself, but... You know, he's one of the scariest players in the field, I would say. Yeah, uh, Jacob Wilson at the Season 1 Invitational was the first player to put his spot into the Players' Championship, and he's got to be one of the one of the headlines of the field. Uh, a Pro Tour Top 8 in Washington, D.C. this year to pair with his Invitational win makes him a strong favorite in the field. Now, in Group B, that is Ali Antrazi, notable brewer, as they yeah. say. No idea what he's going to play here this weekend. He's got a pretty wide range, to say the least. But when he did win our Season 2 Invitational, he beat his good friend Chris Van Meter in the finals. Green, Red, Tron, we know he likes big man of strategies. Expect more of the same this weekend? Well, it'll be pretty interesting. For Alian Trazi, this has really been a return to the top of Magic. You know, a former U.S. national champion. He's making his trip now, now to the Players' Championship, and you're right, doing it on the back of big man of strategies. He won his Invitational with Tron this year. Uh, had a open top eight also with Sultai Ramp, so big man of strategies and stuff you wouldn't expect coming. I would say deck-wise, he might be the wild card of the field this weekend. We take a look at our Season 3 Invitational Champion. This is my wild card, because I have no <laughs> idea what to expect. I think other 15 people playing as well. It's Alex Bustecki, who his run uh, is one of, at least for me, the most impressive that we saw because he was down two games in the finals. He's mulligan the six. It's easy to just wave the white flag. I had a pretty good run, walked out of here with a decent chunk of change, but he battled all the way back against Steve Mann, who of course did play in the Players' Championship last year, but Bustecki able to come all the way back, get the job done, and now he's here. Right, so Alex Bustecki is probably the player that I'd say the field knows the least about. He's a judge from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. As you mentioned it, he kind of had the match of the year in his comeback win over Steve Mann. Uh, if he can play like that this weekend, there's really no telling how far he can go, but after that, you know, we really don't know what to expect from him. And of course, our season four invitational champion might be the hottest player coming in. One could argue you're 3 3 yeah. <laughs> in invitational. You've been battling all year to get open series points. It looks like things are not going to break your way. You need Joe Lissette to win the tournament. Joe loses in the semi, or excuse me, in the quarterfinals in Las Vegas. Well, you know what? I don't have to rely on anyone if I just win the Invitational qualify. And that's exactly what Caleb Scherer did do. He's here this weekend as well. Yeah, Caleb Scherer needed 12 consecutive wins last weekend to make it into the Players' Championship, and he did just that. I think what's been most impressive for him on this run is he's known as a storm specialist in Legacy and actually pulled off this 12-0 victory in a tournament of standard and modern. So if he can play like that in his non Storm formats, he's definitely a contender this weekend. Perhaps a little more well-rounded than people do think is Caleb. Those are our players in Group A, B, C, and D. Now it's trying to figure out who's going to be joining them. We're going to start with our Group A pulling. That means we're going to start with our champions as far as seasonal points are concerned. So we're going to start with someone who was here last year. It was Jim Davis looking to improve on his performance from last year. This year, so now I'm going to dive in to the trophy, who someone's going to walk out of here with. Brad says it's going to be him, but we'll see. We'll see what group Jim is going to go into. I don't get to look at the ball. I have to pass to Matthias. So this goes to you. You All can right. tell us where Jim's going to go. Jim is going to go into Group C for Legacy Play. Okay. So he'll be joined by Alex Bistecki. He'll be joined by Alex Bistecki. So for Jim Davis, he was the Season 1 points leader. Had a pretty good season this year, actually. He's a return trip to the Players' Championship from last year. He's looking to improve on, I think, what was a disappointing finish for him. But 2015 was a strong year for him. Four Open Series top eights, including a win in Indianapolis with Soltai Delver. I uh, wonder if he'll be breaking that one out in Legacy. Yeah, what's well, interesting with Jim, you know, he got it done early. 
So we didn't see a ton of Jim this year. He still came to events and all that stuff. But I think kind of the, the big achievement for him was finally getting that Open Series win you mentioned in Indianapolis where, you know, he was just kind of playing a lot of legacy, kind of made the switch over to Salte Delver, got the job done there finally. And I think it's just kind of, at least to me, a long time coming for Jim to get that win. So now we get ready here for our second pulling. So we're going to dive right in. Kevin Jones, some people call him the daddy. That, that, I learned that one yesterday, actually. No, no one knows no. why, but they call him the daddy. We're going to see where daddy's going to go here. Kevin's <laughs> laughing, by the way. I'm not going to look. Tell us, oh my God, tell us where the daddy's going to go. Well, Kevin will be joining Jacob Wilson in Group A. Tell us more about Kevin. I'm not going to call him all anymore. Right. I, I'm yeah. not, yeah. Good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so Kevin Jones, uh, the current New York State champion, uh, like we said, was in the Players' Championship as well last year. Uh, had a pretty good season. He is definitely still known as just a Jeskai player through and through. Almost all his finishes with Jeskai aggro pre-rotation has moved, you know, to has a good finish with Jeskai Stoneblade. Now looking to maybe play Jeskai Black, uh, one of the more stylized players in the field, but uh, certainly locked up his spot very early on in the season. Yeah, f for Kevin, he's someone who just is always playing, you know, in IQs, opens, all of that stuff. He's just always battling it out, so it's not much of a surprise to see him here yet again. It wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of, of when, at least in my opinion. And we'll see, you know, we've seen in Standard, and you mentioned Jeskai, he's always been a fan of Mantis Rider, so will he be running Mantis Rider again this week and maybe across multiple formats? I guess we'll find out. That's what the magic is for. As now we get ready here for Danny Jessup. For Danny, last year, a heartbreaker. Yeah, this has got to be the Biggest payoff here for Danny. He was the last player to miss the Players' Championship last year. Unfortunately, did not have to sweat it out at the end. Uh, clocked up with the Season 3 points invitation. So we'll see where he's going. And he'll be starting this tournament in Group D, along with Caleb Schur. So for Jessup, again, last person out. In early this year, doesn't have to worry about the sweat, as we saw last year at our Season 4 Invitational in Seattle. He's had some pretty good runs this year. I know he's made a handful of Open Series Top 8s. We just actually saw him Top 8 in Vegas last weekend. So. Yeah, yeah. For Danny, he had a he's had a couple top eights, a top four finish in Richmond, a top four finish in Dallas. So he's had some high high finishes to go along with. I think what was a really consistent season for Danny Jessup, and that's why he's had him as the season three points leader. And last but certainly not least is Joe Lissette. He got the job done in Vegas. A good end of the year run. It was a good year all. Uh, excuse me, good run all year for Joe, but at the end of the year, making the top eight at our Season 4 Invitational, solidifying himself to the Players' Championship, of course, being our Season 4 points champion. There's only one ball left there. Do you mind if I look? I, I mean, okay? I'm hoping is it, it okay? we know it's, what it is. Okay, it's a B, right. so we got lucky there. Nothing's broken here. But for Joe, you know, you think of him, you think of miracles, obviously. You think of standard, actually, though, at least for me. You know, before it was, he's the legacy guy, he's the miracles guy, but I think that's changed quite a bit, because he's got a lot of standard top eights on the resume now. Yeah, so Joe Lissette, he's another player who was in our Players' Championship last year. He has had, actually, statistically, one of the best seasons here of anyone in 2015, and I think what really headlines it is the fact that it's been on the back of standard. Of the players in the field, he's the one with multiple open wins. Uh, took a win in both Columbus and Richmond, and as you mentioned, those are both standard decks. He was using none of his Hallmark wins, and he has many top eights this season were actually with Miracles. I think if you talk to Joe, he'll tell you the weaknesses in Modern, and we'll see if he's able to shore that up because you got to get through all three formats to be able to win this thing. Legacy, we know how great he is there with Miracles, and we'll see if he's playing that here this weekend because we remember last year, he made the switch. He played Reanimator. He made the switch to Reanimator, yeah. So you never know if he's going to play Miracles, if he's going to play Reanimator, what he's going to do. But what I do know is that if he's able to make day number two of competition, again, you think of him as a legacy player, I, I think he might be scared of him in standard now. Yeah, I mean, he's, he certainly has come into his own in standard. You know, now has his own deck of his creation that he's been jamming in, in all the events recently. You know, had an invitational top eight just last weekend. Yeah, five pillar bring the light. We might see him play that in standard tomorrow, assuming he makes it there. But now, we get ready for our eight at large bids. That means we have to start with the defending champion. Absolutely. Brand Brad Nelson, he's been, well, we can say he's had the opportunity to prepare all year long. And if you know anything about Brad, his preparation, you have to imagine he's ready to go this weekend. Brad is an interesting player in that he has great preparation, and I would say is the most intimidating player to play against at the table. Uh, simply, he has a drive to win. We saw that last year as he went nearly undefeated on the entire tournament, taking down the Players' Championship. He was the reigning champion, so he had the invite all year and took that time instead of to, to lock up Platinum Pro for 2015. Well, I've got the ball in my hand. You can tell me where Brad is going to go. Which group will he be joining? This is going to be a tough one. Brad's actually going to go ahead and join Group A. Okay, so that means he'll be joining Jacob Wilson. And we'll see you here in just a moment as we take a look at the updated graphic in just a second. But it's also going to be Kevin Jones as well. So that one's looking pretty tough. All groups are going to be tough, obviously. Well, That's yeah, tough. Both the Platinum Pros in the field are in the same group. That one's, that one's going to be tough, absolutely. And that, of course, means we'll have a Brad Nelson-Jacob Wilson match at some point. 
So that'll be fun to watch. So that'll be beautiful. Now, we've talked about unknowns in the field. Obviously, Alex Pistecki is one. I think the other person who's probably the most unknown is Jonathan Murawski. Uh, a lot of work done in the IQ circuit. But if you talk to the players that he does play with, your Dave Shields, some other Northeast players in the area, this, this guy's played on Pro Tours. He's no slouch. No, absolutely not. So John Murawski, he is someone, as you mentioned, really came here off the, off the IQ circuit. But if you think about, you know, we talked about players like getting their first chance to really plant their flag this season. Jonathan Murawski, a two-time Northeast region, New England Regionals champion just in 2015, a two-time Massachusetts state champion in 2015. Now, remember, we only hold four of these tournaments a year. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good resume That's right there. Bad. So, so cause we'll see if he can bring that success from the Northeast down to the Players' Championship here. Where's he going? Jonathan will be in Group B. All right. So he, as we will see this graphic update in just a moment, will be joining... Oh, my brain's going to work. Ali Antrazi and Joe Lissette. So uh, uh, certainly an unknown in that field, and you have to imagine for Ali and for Joe, you're not really sure what to expect from Rowski, especially in the legacy portion. Yeah, it'll be really interesting. So we looked at some of his best finishes and the IQs that he used to get here, and one thing that really stood out to me is he actually has a wide range of decks that he's able to play, had both you know, uh, combo and aggro and mid-range elements in his resume in all three formats. So he's going to be pretty hard to metagame against. It'll be interesting to see how he sizes up against this field. Um, this field's interesting in that Group B is really kind of turning into your slow deck strategy between Joe's methodical control decks and Ali's large ramp decks. I think we're going to have some pretty interesting matchups in this group. Well, to Ross Merriam, we're going to go. He was here last year. He's here again this year. A heck of a season for Ross, one of the at-large bids. And as we do dive in here to see which group he's going to go into, we'll let you tell us more about Ross. As soon as we see where he's going to go, I can't look. I, I cheated. All right, well, Ross will be the third player in Group D for this weekend. So tell us more about Ross and his accomplishments this year in the Open Series. So Ross Miriam last year actually had a great Players' Championship. He finished in the top eight. He lost to make it into his win and win for top four, but had a very good season. I would think of all the players in the field, Ross may be, as far as just Overall, maybe the most improved player from 2014 to 2015. Uh, you can definitely see his preparation, working with pro teams over the last year and just in his match play. Um, I think last year he came as someone who really was making a name in the Players' Championship, and this year he enters as one of the favorites. For Ross, he'll be joining Caleb Scherer and Danny Jessup. So that group in D is starting to round itself out. And now we get ready for someone who missed it last year. Helped Brad prepare a lot last year for his title, and he was not going to be happy if he missed it this year, but he's in. It's Todd Anderson, who's had a lot of Open Series dominance. We'll get to that, but we've got to figure out what group he's going to go into. For selfish reasons, I'm hoping Group A. Oh, goodness. Makes it super, <laughs> makes it super watchable. But. Okay, here we go. All right. Todd will be the third player to join Group C. Fair enough. So, tell us about Todd and his dominance in the Open Series this year. Well, of all the players in the field, Todd here has one of the best percentages and really, I think, has actually been probably the, mo the strongest player on the Open Series for 2015. Has won nearly 70% of his matches, has played over 300 of them. Six Open Series top eights in 2015, including a win in Legacy with Infect. Um, Todd has just been very dominant this year, and I'd expect that to continue this weekend. Yeah, we'll see what Dexy does want to select. We know that time will not be an issue. He's a fast player, but he's a very skilled one as well. As now we get ready here for Hunter Nance. A new player, a new face. We've seen a lot of work from him on the IQs, some Open Series top eights as well. We'll get to his stats in just a second, but we got to see where he's going to go. So we reach in here. I like this one. We'll pass it along to you. All right, Hunter is going to be the last player to round out the field in Group B for the Legacy portion. So tell us about Hunter. I know we don't see him. We, we haven't seen a ton. He's got some accomplishments, obviously, for Open Top 8s, 22 years old from Raleigh, North Carolina. So Hunter, is this is his first year on the Open Series, and it was actually a very successful year for him. He had a n number of Top 8s. Now, he had three second-place finishes in the Open Series this year, which has been very impressive. No wins yet. We're still looking for that. Maybe he can punch one this weekend. Um, he is definitely a deck specialist in that, you know, he does not waver off his deck choices. He's been playing the same modern deck, the same standard deck, and the same Legacy deck for quite a while. It'd be a surprise to see him do anything else this weekend, but he's very good at what he does. Could be a good time to switch it up. Take the field by surprise. Certainly would do that. Rudy Briscoe is the next player who we will be figuring out where he'll be going. It's been a good year for Rudy as well. We've seen him innovate some things on the Open Series. We've seen some solid performances. And now as I pass this over, we're going to figure out what group he'll be going to. So let us know. Well, Rudy is going to round out what is turning into the difficult Group A. So he's your last player there. That is a very difficult group, obviously. That'll be Brad Nelson and Jacob Wilson. The two Platinum Pros are in that group as well. For Rudy, 26 years old from Baltimore, Maryland, tell us more about him. So Rudy Bricks uh, started out this season, this year, I think on the outside, really, of the Players' Championship race, but made a great run at the end of the season in the IQs to lock up a spot in the Players' Championship going into the last weekend. Uh, also had a finals appearance in SCG Columbus this year, so has some top eight finishes as well. I think you generally see him gravitate toward three or four color mid-range and control strategies, which is what we 
should expect to see out of him this weekend. I mean, and that's going to be a difficult task if you're playing those kind of decks, I guess, in what I think is really shaping up to be the toughest group here. Um, it'll be a, a tall task for him, but it's his first Invitational. I know he's been trying to get to this for a couple of years, so we'll see if he's ready for the task. He worked his butt off this year to get here, that's for sure. Logan Mai is another player, and, you know, this one thing that we do talk about quite a bit in the Open Series, kind of one of the nerves is, builders. can you do it if you live in Florida? Can you do it if you live in California? Sure. Joe Lissette says yes. L uh, Logan Mai says yes as well. So now we dive in here. Logan making a return trip here to the Players' Championship. I'm going to pass this one over to you. No cheating. All right, Logan Mines will be the last player in Group D. So for the Florida native, second year in a row here, tell us more about him, because I'll tell you what, his percentage of qualifying and getting here and doing well in opens, pretty good. Yeah, Logan Mize has one of the better win percentages, really, of players here. He's he's very strong in the IQ series. If you look at this, almost a 65% win percentage in 2015. That's one of the better percentages on the field, too. Uh, a pretty strong player. Last year, he almost made day two of the, champion, of the Players' Championship. I believe was knocked out by Joe Lissette playing for that honor. So we'll see if he can improve on that finish this year. I think, once again, he's one of those players who is going to come back this year stronger and in more of a favorite position than last. And last, but certainly not least, is Tom the Boss Ross, a player that we did see make it here Last year, he is here again this year. There's only one ball left in this cup. It's a C. That's where the boss is going to go. That means he'll be joined by Alex Bastecki, Jim Davis, and Todd Anderson. Makes for a pretty impressive group. Now, Tom, we know he likes to attack. We know he likes to beat down, likes red strategies. Won back-to-back -back invitationals last year. Didn't have the same amount of success on invitationals this year, but still certainly a, a person to be reckoned with here. Yeah, no invitational win meant that Tom just had to, I suppose if you want to say it, settle for one of the at-large bids, but really had no problem in doing so this year. You're right, he certainly is one of the more attacking-oriented players of the field. Uh, a Tarka Red in standard. Uh, Infect is certainly in his resume in both Legacy and Modern. Um, and I, I would not be surprised to see him go very far this weekend. So what makes this weekend so interesting is the 16 competitors kind of coming into the tournament. They know who's going to be in the tournament. That's no surprise. So now the metagaming takes place, and what you think people are going to play? Will Tom play Tarka Red? Will he play Infect? Will Joe play Miracles? A, B, C, X, Y, Z, all the way down the line. That's what we're going to find out. Now, do keep in mind for this particular tournament, once a particular section does start, so we're going to start with Legacy Group Play, players will have access to each other's deck lists, so they have an idea of what each other will be playing, so that won't come as much of a surprise. But it's going to be a lot of fun to watch things unfold here, because you, me, Patrick, we know what everyone's playing. Yeah. So there are going to be some surprises here. You guys will be finding out at home kind of around the same time as the players do. So it's going to be a really, really fun tournament. We have our groups all figured out. We're good to go here. So that means action is going to begin here in just a second. But we want to start things off with Brad Nelson, his player interview, our defending champion, who we haven't seen a ton this year. But when you do win the Players' Championship, you earn the right to take a little time off. Am I right? Absolutely. So, Brad Nelson, his interview. We'll learn more about the player champion who's experienced a lot of highs in Magic, some lows as well. And then we're going to kick things off round number one with our player champion from last year. So now, you'll learn more about Brad Nelson and then round number one of action here from the Star City Game Center. So, in ninth grade, my buddy Bill Lease actually had me come uh, to his test group or play group. Uh, it was just a multiplayer. The biggest crawl worm won the...